Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. But because our people didn't get a chance to read, you know, the first 150 to 200 years of slavery. And then now when we start to learn to read, what happened? We still don't read as, as much. So you have a saying with them, say, if you want to hide anything for a black man, put it in a book. You understand? So we don't, we don't, we don't really, you know, examine what this book said. But read on. The book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8. Beware, lest anyone spoil you through philosophies and vain deceits. It's a beware. Don't make nobody, no make any man spoil you through philosophies and vain deceit. Christmas is a philosophy. Valentine's Day is a philosophy. Birthdays, you understand? Easter, you understand? Because what these people do, they, they look on the early days and right in the time of the early days, they find days to give you, for you to forget what God gave you as holy days. So that is what happened in the world. But read on. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. So it says, so it says after the tradition of man and after the rudiment of the world. Of the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. And it is not after Christ, brother. So now we're going to go into Christmas and, and what the Bible said about Christmas. Get me Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10 and 1. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord spake unto you, O house of Israel. God is addressing only Israel. And we are the Israelites. We in Jamaica are from the tribe of Benjamin. You understand? So this Bible, from back to front, only address the Israelite, which you know that it was Jacob of 12 kids. And, and Jacob named changed to Israel, and he have the 12 tribe of Israel. Read on. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So it said, learn not the way of the heathen. The heathen is going into the other nation, the Arab, the Chinese man. The Indian man, but mostly the white man. Because he's the one who, who, who is running the herd now. And he, give, he said, all the philosophies that you have, run on. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathens are dismayed at them. Australia. Verse 3. Read it again, Bella. Verse 2. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathens, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen. So he said, do not dismay of the signs of heaven. So you see, astrology. Them cool when you say, come boy, and I'm going to come on TV, I tell you about, you will come, 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 come read your palm. And when you get up all the morning time, when you buy all the, all the green, and you talk about, you look for Harry's school. The rest of the nation, them do them type of thing there. We as Israel, not supposed to do them thing there. That's because right. if we have the understanding, we don't know that the Father make all these things for us. Right. You understand? And we are gods. Right. So we don't have to go into those witchcraft. Right. You understand? Because we have the true and living God. Fidele. Go ahead, brother. Verse, verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. So it's the custom of the people are vain. Let us see what vain custom the people go ahead and do. For one, cut the tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the work, workman, read on, with the axe. Verse 3 says, one 
Because that tree out there, Forex, with the axe, the work of the work man. Read up. Verse 4. They take it with silver and with gold. So, so in, in cut all the tree out of the flowers with an axe and then deck it with silver and with gold. Well, that's all it look like. Eh? No, man. You, you, you check it. Listen again. Listen again. Listen again. They deck it. Read from the top, brother. All right. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 10 and verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one God said the tree out of the forest. So he said, one cut that tree out of the forest. The work of an hand of the workman with the ox. So he used the ox and cut all the tree. Verse 4. They take it with silver and with gold. So after him cut all the ox, he cut all the tree with the ox. Then he's going to use silver and gold to decorate it. What that soul do you like? Christmas tree, my friend. Christmas tree, it's it plain, plain as day, no king. I love two, I love two, you know, really, I put out your thinking cap, you know. It's plain as day. Read it again for the better man. They take it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. The Bible said they fasten it with nail and with hammer. So them use, them use the nail and hammer and make a foot feet. No, today they don't need for the that. You can just go in and store and go buy an artificial one with the foot to you stick it in and you're ready to go. You understand? But that is what it's going into. But read on, brother. That it move not. Verse 5, it with nail and hammer that it move not. Read on. Verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree. They are upright as the palm tree. Christmas tree, brother. They deck it with silver and with gold. No, people don't even know so them, them reading here in the Bible. They understand it. But read on. And remember, so the Bible, remember so the Bible say the people, the things that the people are do are vain. You understand? It now has no purpose. Read on. They are upright as a palm tree, but speak not. They must needs to be born because they cannot go. Be so it said. It said them can't move. So anywhere that the, these trees want to go, and you have to lift it up and carry it. That means if you put it in another corner there, if you, if, you, if you put it in another corner there, and you decide, say, this is your brother want it there, sir. And you have to take it up and carry it go somewhere else. Kind of life. That's right. right. Read that. Because they cannot go, but not be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. So basically, the Bible has said them can't do evil and them can't do good. Because back in the days, this was a custom that they used to use and people used to, you know, when, you know witchcraft and those type of things. So that's why I'm saying it can't do evil and it can't do good. No, when, when today they, what they do, they put that tree in the house and they put a present on the tree and then them tell the, when the youth them wake up, them tell the youth them say Santa carry the tree. A big fat man come down in a chimney. No for them was a dirty thing in a chimney. See a big fat man come down in a chimney and left it and go again. That what a wicked lie. Why are you telling your kids these things? You understand what I'm saying, brother? Take this tree with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nail and hammer that it move not. And then you're going to work all the year. You work for a year to buy a present for your child. And then you're going to tell your child that is Santa Claus, leave it and give him. And when you go to when the child go to get that that present from our the tree, the child is worshiping the tree because he has to bow to take up the present. So in that time it's a sign that devil worshiping as well. Because the Bible said you you shouldn't do it. We are the children of Israel. Don't supposed to do those customs. Because we are God's brother. We don't supposed to follow these customs. Yeah. Read on, brother. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grows strong. 
was kept as a law. All praises to the Most High. Let's uh, where you at? Read that again. Go ahead. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter fourteen and verse sixteen. Thus, in process of time. And this is thus in process of time. So everything that we find ourselves in today, the customs that we keep, right? The uh, religious institutions that we are scattered into. In a process of a time, we didn't freely uh, take on these doctrines, right? Like white man Jesus. These customs, our forefathers' blood were shed. We got, we, we, our forefathers went through genocide before that. Before what? They took on those doctrines. So it says, in a process of time, read, and this is the, what the brother went over in Jeremiah 10. It's been from the Babylonian captivity, right? Because what was going on? Who are the Babylonians? They are the Cushites. They are the same lineage of people who came from Nimrod. So now read that verse again. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter, chapter 14 and verse 16. Thus, in process of, process of time, an ungodly custom. An, un, an ungodly what? Custom. How would you know if a custom is ungodly, brother? How would you know if a custom is ungodly? How would you know whether or not something is ungodly? You would know if it's ungodly if it's not written here. You would know if it's godly if you would go in the book and you go to the feast days that God instituted. But you would not go in the book to find where God signed off on us or commanded for us to celebrate Christmas or to celebrate his birth or to celebrate Easter. Right? You would not find that. So it says what? Read again. Thus in the process of time and ungodly custom grows strong. Grows strong. You see that, brethren? It grew strong because in the 15, 1400s, there was no such thing as our people following these customs. The native people who were here, the Native Americans, right? Our people who were ruling in, in Rome, because we were ruling in Rome. We didn't follow these customs. It's in a process of time, the 14, 15, 16, the hundreds, we start to learn these customs. Right? Read on. Was strong. Was kept as a law. Was kept as a law. Meaning what? If you break a law, what would have happened to you? You get punished, right? So if we did not follow the customs at the time that these customs were pushed, that they were decreed as laws, we would have been what? Buried alive. We would have been burned. That's what, that's what was happening in this um, Spanish Inquisition. They were, they, if we practice, right, our culture, our customs, are the, in fact, our culture and customs are the commandments of God. And the Sabbath days, if, we, if they found us doing that, we would have been put, in, put to death. This is the history behind Christianity. Read on. And graven image, where? Images were worshipped by the God commandments of kings. Like for example, white Jesus. That was a graven image. If we never bowed down to white Jesus, we would have gotten put to death. So like on the fly I gave you, brother, the image of Christ, the real description of Christ is in the Bible. Revelation 1, 14. John 14 and 15. Read that. The book of John, verse 4, chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. You hear what Christ instructs us to do? If you love me, keep my commandments. What are the commandments on our days of feastings, on our days of celebration? Do you know that the Sabbath day is the law and get the, any kind of gathering that the Israelites have. It's the Sabbath day, is the law that gathers, it's the ceremonial law. It's the day that when we come together and have feastings and celebration. Like for example, we have just ended our eighth day of feast of dedication. Eight day, we get, you know, the most High God give you eight day off. In this society, we get one day off. So the ways of God is always better. God's ways is always best. But we forsake God's way. And God said, because you didn't want to serve me, I'm going to have you serve your enemy. Right? Now, read that verse. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23, and verse 3. Six days shall work be done. But the seventh day 
is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. So the Bible, this is talking about the weekly Sabbath, right? So six days, as, as you may know, brother, the first day of the week is what? Which day is the first day of the week? Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week. So from Sunday to Friday, sundown, that completes six days. And when Friday sundown hits and the sun goes down and it gets dark, that's the Sabbath. So it says six days shall we labor. There are, there are certain things, there are certain law that governs the Sabbath. So six days we have to labor and the seventh, no, let, let's read that. Seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. It says the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Right? That's one, but that's one holy day that God, if we read and follow this, this is what God requires of us. Right? How are we confused to be following Sunday as a Sabbath? Right? Christmas that has nothing to do with Christ. You're worshiping Sol Invictus, the winter solstice. Right? Look it up. Do your research. This has nothing to do with people get caught up in all of these traditions. And it has nothing to do with glorifying God. Read on. And holy convocation. And you know, what a, you know what a convocation is, brother? A convocation is a holy gathering. That's when we gather. It's our days that we come together and we gather together. But black people don't know how to gather together. Because what, 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 are, the, what, do, what are the banners that we gather under? Right? Christianity. Christianity have been proven ineffective. Right? So now continue reading. He shall do no work therein. So on the Sabbath day we shouldn't be working. So if you have a business place, you close up a business place. You shouldn't be going out buying and selling on the Sabbath. Those are laws governing the Sabbath. You know what the Sabbath day represents, brother? The Sabbath day represents, it says it's a day of rest. You know what they re that day represents? It represents the rest we're going to have from our captivity. That's what the Sabbath represents, you know. The Sabbath represents the rest that we're finally going to have from all of the, the tribulation, the persecution, the trial, the bondage and slavery that we have been suffering. Day up, day up, day, day in, day out, we are work. When, do, when, when is the last time you rest, brethren? You know, rest down. Because every day you go out and you have your work, you have your hustle. Because you have more to feed. Right? So the Sabbath day, what our people don't understand, they think that, oh, it's just a regular day. But God says, if you keep that day holy, God says he's go, you're going to ride up on, on the high places of the earth. We're going to get that in a minute. Read, continue reading. He shall do no work therein. So God says, he requires of you, my brethren, to keep the commandments of the Lord. That's what God requires of you. Right? So now let's see. Give me Leviticus. Leviticus 21 and 5. Because you want the kingdom, right? The kingdom is not going to be handed to you on a, a silver platter. You have to endure. You have to do the things that God commands you to do. And in living in this sinful world, it's not a task that is easily accomplished. I'm going to start with the most basic commandments. Read. So this is Leviticus 21 and 5. Read that. The book of Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. So the scripture says, the man, the Israelite man, should not make baldness upon his head. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So guess what now, brother? It's when you read this Bible, you're going to be convicted because of what? The Bible is going to expose us. No, make any cutting in thy flesh. Meaning putting on tattoos. Right? God says he's against that. So the man should have a beard. He should have hair on his head. And he shouldn't be putting on tattoos. Those, that's a simple law. So how do you keep that law now, brother? What will you have to do from here on in order to keep this? Let's make your hair grow. Let's make your beard grow. You can't keep it low or you can't keep it big. But you, you have to have a beard. Right? Read up. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And you know why you need to know this, brother? 
It says the head of every man is Christ. Read on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who is the head for the woman? The man. Right? So, here you are. A lot of sisters are going to have... Are you married? A lot of sisters are going to have problem with this. Because a woman don't want to humble down and follow a man's instruction and want to, or, or want, or to be submissive to a man. Because this society, that's another thing that they glorify. Women who think and carry the thought that they don't need a man. Continue reading. And the head of the woman is the man. That's what God says. Christianity will read that and say, I'm not so you go. A real thing in a brother. Christianity will read that and say, oh, it means something else. A 50-50. You get 50-50 out of that? It says the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Continue reading. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ. Not even Christ. Not, not even Christ have his own way. Or can have his own way. Christ says, I speak not my doctrine. But my father's doctrine who sent me. Right. So likewise, the father, Christ, man, and the woman. Anybody who don't disagree with that, is either you repent or, you, or die. It's simple. You can't expect the Bible to conform to your way of living. Or who you want. You have to bend your mind or conform your mind to the Bible. That's right. That's what God said. Right? So now continue reading. Verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. So now it's going into, since we have established the order, it's going into every man praying or prophesying. Or what are we doing now? We are prophesying. This is the spirit of prophecy. Right? Continue reading. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, having his head covered with dishonoreth his head. So who is your head, brother? Who we say your head was? Huh? Sorry? No, man. Who, no. Who is your head? Remember, God, God, Christ, man, woman. Who is, a, woman, who is the woman's head? Man. Who is the man's head? Correct? And who is Christ's head? God. There you go. There you go. So it says, if any man pray or prophesying with his head covered, meaning you have something on your head, you know, you see like where you have the helmet on your head, it says what? His head covered, his honor his head. Who are you dishonoring? You're dishonoring Christ. You're not giving reverence to Christ. So in order to show that you reverence Christ, my virgin, what should you do with the helmet? Since you're now in the midst of prophecy. When you ride off, you can put it back on. But what do you have to do to reverence Christ? There you go. So are you going to, are you going to apply that commandment? It's a simple line, you know. It's just to remove it. All, all, all praises to the Mosai. Let's give the Mosai a round of applause. All praises to the Mosai, brother. So that's a spirit of humility. This is a spirit that wants to learn. This is a spirit that is bearing witness with the word of God. Because, you know, we ask some man, and the man, some man, Say, so boy, you know, me can't take out my hat. Because now you prove to me, because I asked you earlier, do you want the kingdom? This is, these are the things that you have to do to get, these are the principles that we, that we follow. Right? So, so going forward, even if you, when you're praying as well, you remove your mat. Let me just give you one scripture before you go. Give me that, Matthew 19, 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. Read. Be and behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Because that's when he passed, the brother was riding on the bicycle. And the brother heard us. And the brother turned back on the bicycle and came here. That's why you, your spirit wants how to get salvation. Because you know that something is wrong. Right? The most I say, my sheep will hear my voice. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark.
We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.